Today we're pressing in on seasons. For everything, there is a season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 tells us that for everything, other translations read occasion, uh, there is a season. And it continues on talking about every activity under the heavens, right? There is a season. And then it begins to list out in chapter 3 all different kind of activities referring to the different seasons of life. And how true is this in our lives? Whether we want to admit it or not, there's different seasons. Some of us, as we're getting older, we don't want to admit we're about to step into another season. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you, uh, you remember back when, when, when you were four or five years old, and, and you can, those are your earliest, or at least my earliest memories, and maybe some even as young as three, I don't know. But uh, we, we, we remember our memories, uh, 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 other memories and uh, different seasons being uh, in school and entering elementary school and going through that. And, uh, and then some of you remember the season of middle school and and you were either on the top or the bottom of the class. You know what I'm talking about, uh, depending on where you were at, um, cool kid or not. And, uh, and so then you entered high school, and uh, it's a different season. It's a different season. And then you continued on either straight into the workforce or into college, different seasons of life. And some of you were uh, dating. Some of you are in the dating season even right now. And it's a season of life. I thank God, um, by the way. Um, not to like rub it in faces or anything, but I thank God that I'm not in that season. Uh, and it's been a long time since I've been in that season. What a season, by the way. Uh, and some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're like, Pray, I can't wait till the season's over, man. And, uh, and so I don't know where you're at, what kind of season that, you're, that you're, you're walking through. Some of you, you remember the season of your first child. And that changed everything, right? And then the second one was like, it's not a special. No, I mean, it's still special. Uh, but you don't want to admit, you don't want to admit to the other one, like, you know, you know, but that first one was really special. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I won't tell the other kids, uh, you know, I won't, I, won't, I won't tell on you. But there's different seasons that we walk through. There's different seasons uh, that, we, that we walk through. And uh, in verses 8 through 10, what we find in chapter 2 of, Song, of Songs is that there will be seasons of passion. Turn to the person next to you and let them know there's going to be seasons of passion. Be careful, by the way, if you're young, if you're, you're single, you know, be very careful, okay? There'll be, there, there's going to be seasons of passion, all right? Hold, hold on, oh, hold on, don't get ahead. Don't get ahead of the word, okay? There will be seasons of, of passion. There will be seasons of, of passion. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8, man. Let's look at the word. Listen, my love is approaching. Look, here he comes, leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My love is like a gazelle or a young stag. See, he's standing behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My love calls to me. Arise, my darling. Come away, my beautiful one. What we see here is a season of excitement. There's a season of passion. Uh, we see that uh, her love is leaping over the mountains and bounding over the hills. And there was a time in your life that that was you. You were leaping over the mountains and bounding over the hills. Uh, uh, some of you, it's been a long time and maybe you can't relate to the young stag part, but let's just continue on. You know what I'm talking about? There's different seasons in, in our life. I, I'll never forget, man, seeing Audra for the first time. Seeing Audra for the first time. And I was a student pastor up in outside of Gainesville, and, uh, and we were partnering with a local church here in Fort Pierce, the church her and her family were a part of. We were, we we're partnering to uh, go on a mission trip for a week to Jamaica and partner with this local church. And I'll never forget the first time I saw her. I knew one thing, she was beautiful. And, uh, and, and what happened over that week is, uh, yes, I noticed her time and time again. And we began a uh, a talking relationship and, uh, and, and begin to, to grow. And by the time that trip was over, man, I, I just, I knew. I knew she was the one. It was, in, it was incredible. It was insane. But there was a season of, of passion, of excitement. I was leaping over uh, the turnpike uh, at early mornings of the night uh, after uh, serving local uh, student ministry. I would get in the car and come here for a few days uh, and that went on for months and months and months and made that three and a half hour drive one way uh, in the middle of the night. I was leaping over those mountains and bounding over the hills. There will be seasons of, of passion. And I want to I say this, before the marriage, during the season, for all the single folks that is, but before the marriage and during the season, I want to encourage you to limit 
time and touch. To limit time and touch. Why am I suggesting that? I'm suggesting that because if you don't limit time and touch, what will happen, what will happen is you will begin to break your godly standards. You will begin to break your godly standards if you don't limit your time and your touch. Uh, by the way, how many of you have experienced, uh, you know, that friend that gets in a relationship and then does, stops answering his phone, her phone, the, the text messages, just stops hanging out with anybody else? It's like all consuming around the person. Uh, but, uh, so, so just a side note, don't be that friend, okay? Uh, just a side note, don't be that friend. We need other people in our lives, other influences in our lives, other, other ears in, in, in our lives, other shoulders to cry on in our lives. So what often happens is in a single relationship, uh, as you begin dating this person and you cut the people out and, and man you don't have anyone but that one person and then what happens and what happens when challenges arise in a relationship man you need other people in your life I would encourage you during this season before marriage limit time and and touch I don't need to go any further why we would limit touch uh, because it will certainly break the godly standards if we don't limit touch one touch leads to a second touch to a third touch, to a little softer touch. And that's as far as we're going to go for now with the touch. But I would encourage you to limit time and touch. I hope you're listening. Uh, listen, now I will say this. I will say this. In the marriage, in the marriage context, all the married folks in the house, all the married folks in the house, don't miss this. Uh, I would encourage you to maximize, maximize time and Touch, praise God, maximize time and touch in the marriage. It needs to happen. The time needs to happen. Uh, now, now, I'm not suggesting cut out other relationships. No, no, no. What I am suggesting and recommending is, is, is that uh, the person that God has placed in your life, your bride, your husband, needs to be a priority in your life. Now, I would say, according to my biblical stance is, they need to be the number two priority in your life. Well, who's number one? Is it work? Is it kids? No. But so many times work and kids are and above. No, but Lord Jesus Christ needs to be your number one priority. As we're growing to become fully devoted followers of Christ, if the Lord Jesus isn't our number one priority, yeah, he'll just start to slip. Man, he's two, he's three, he's four. Next thing you know, it's like, man, I, I, I don't even have a relationship anymore. It doesn't feel like I have a relationship anymore. I can't hear his voice. I, I just, I don't know what's going on. And so I would encourage you to make Lord Jesus your number one priority. And, and then in the married mar marriage context, listen, make your spouse your number, your number two priority. There needs to be time that you spend. I, I, I'll tell you one of the greatest things that Audra and I uh, uh, did in the early days is we established a Monday date night. For those that have been with us a long time and, and walking with us for a while, you, you know about the Monday the Monday thing. I mean, it's um, whether it's a, a Monday date night, a date day sometimes, a date lunch, I don't know. But we, we have carved out time on Mondays for each other. And, and that's a time where we can actually talk about life. And we can talk about where we're going. We can talk about all the challenges. We can, you know, share our hearts with each other. We've carved it out and protected it. And, uh, and what, it, what it does is it, it, it reminds us of that season of passion. It keeps that season of passion alive. Praise God, by the way. And, uh, and so, so, so it's important. So never forget the passion, the excitement leading up to the marriage. If you're married today, don't forget that. Some of you have lost it. You've lost the passion. You've lost the excitement. Come on, act like a young stag uh, uh, again. That will, that will hit you in just a minute. Uh, let's look at verse 11. Some of you, I don't even know what I stepped into today. It, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, the second, there will be seasons of, of preparation. There will be seasons of preparation, and, and we can't miss this. Don't, don't miss this. Look at verse 11. For now the winter is past. The rain has ended and gone away. The blossoms appear in the countryside. The time of singing has come, and the turtle dove's cooing is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens its figs. The blossoming vines give off their fragrance. Arise, my darling, come away, my beautiful one. My dove in the clefts of the rock and the crevices of the cliff. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. Your voice is sweet, and your face is lovely. There will be seasons of preparation. We see in verse 11 that the winter is past. The winter is, by the way, I was just in Israel. It's winter right now, and uh, it's cold, and it's rainy. 
There's not a whole lot that's growing in this season. Winter is a season of preparation for the spring is coming. And what all too often happens is we rush into the spring prematurely. We rush into the spring not prepared for what we're about to step into. <clears throat> Some of us are so focused on that marriage date. I, I talk to people all the time. They're so focused on the wedding day, the wedding day, that they're not thinking about all the years to follow. They're not prepared for the marriage. They're prepared for the wedding day. What a tragedy. What, what a tragedy. And so there will be seasons of, of passion. There will be seasons of preparation. And that's what's taking place in the wintertime. And we're preparing for the spring. We're preparing, preparing for what, what's about to, to come. Listen, in this season of preparation, I, I, I would encourage you to meet with someone and, and do, uh, if you're engaged today, begin walking through some premarital counseling uh, um, all the single folks, man, when you get into that relationship, whether it be years from now, it, it would be a good, wise thing to uh, uh, walk through with someone uh, premarital counseling that can point you to the Word of God, that can help prepare you for that marriage. And so in that preparation, talk about your past. Now, what you don't want to do is step into the marriage and there'll be some things that you were trying to uh, hidden under the rug, and guess what? It comes out in the marriage. You need to talk about your past. You need to talk about your past. Listen, if someone can't forgive you now, they're not going to forgive you later. I mean, that's the truth. So do you trust the person that you're about to step into this commitment with? And so in this season of preparation, talk about your past. And talk about your future. Uh, you should share your dreams with one another. You should share your passions with one another. Whether, whether you enjoy the hobbies, by the way, or not, no one's, there's no book that says you have to enjoy the hobbies, but you should support their hobbies. I mean, what are the excitements and passions? Where are you going in life? What's your bucket list look like? What are the countries you want to visit? How many children uh, do you want to have? Some of you get into, I, I, I've met with people that have gotten into marriage and they're like, hey, we never talked about that, the kid thing. And, and next thing you know, it's like four kids and they're freaking out. Like, I don't know what to do here. And, and so this season of preparation is an important season. Listen, if you're married today, never forget about the season of preparation. Continue to revisit this season of preparation. Continue to talk about the dreams with one another. Continue to talk about the passions that you both have and want to share together. Continue to revisit this season of preparation. Next, uh, look at verse 15. What we see in verse 15 is, in all seasons, protect your purity. In all seasons, wherever you're at in life, my encouragement from God's word today is protect your purity. Look at verse 15. Catch the foxes for us. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards. For our vineyards are in bloom. Don't miss this verse 15. I, I underlined it just because it, it just jumps off the pages. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards. All, all too many times we, we see the little, uh, the little things that, that, that come into our life and we don't see them as a thing of destruction. We just, we just kind of go with it. And, and next thing we know, that little fox turns into a big fox and we got a big problem. Uh, listen, if we're going to be men and women of integrity, men and women of, of character, that have godly standards... We need to make sure that we're aware of the little foxes that are coming to destroy what God has put together. If you think the enemy is not, is not active, not active throughout this world, not active in our community, not actively trying to draw you away from the Lord Jesus, then you're fooled today. I want to share a couple uh, 
practical tips for, for guarding purity. In all seasons, protect, protect your purity. Last week, we, we began to mention this and just take it one step further. If we're going to protect, properly protect our purity, then, then we need to inform others of our limits. We need to inform others of our limits. Uh, starting with, if you're single today, you need to inform the, the, the other person that you're dating. You, you, the, in a dating relationship, you need to inform them of, of your limits. But listen, you need, you need to inform in your workplace. You need to inform their coworkers of your limits. How many, how many times, you know, somebody's brought out this picture or started this conversation, and next thing you know, it's like, wow, how did I even get in this thing? It's because we never informed others of our limits. Uh, you, you need to, uh, um, other circles of, uh, of friends, man, you need to make known that there are, is a godly standard in your life. Now, this is a big difference between uh, like a holier-than-thou persona Right? We've all been around those people, even quite possibly you've been that person. right? I've been that person, and uh, thank God for his grace and for setting me free from that person. I don't want to be that person. Man, I, I've been set free uh, because of Jesus, amen, and there's no legalism attached to it. I don't want to be a modern-day Pharisee, but, 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 but some uh, are just that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just being a man, woman, called by God, set free by God, just wants to be like Jesus, follow Jesus with everything that we have, man or woman of godly standards. And part of that, if we're going to protect our purity, we have to let other people know, man, there's a standard. There, there's a standard, man. Maybe somebody's messaging you on, on Facebook, Instagram, and sending some messages that, that and starting some, some relationship uh, that you wouldn't even call relationship, but that's how it starts. It starts little. It starts small. And, and before you know it, it's, it's a big deal and it's a big situation. People need to know our limits. People need to know that we have a, a, a standard. We have a standard. Uh, the, second, the second is this. Uh, if you're married today, if you're not married, I told the uh, 930, put your earmuffs on if you're not married. Uh, but uh, I won't tell you to do that today unless you really want to put earmuffs on. That's cool too. But, but uh, it, uh, if we're going to protect our purity, if you're married today, listen, uh, uh, there, there's no easy way to say it, but just uh, you, you need to, uh, have sex more, okay? And I mean, it's like weird, like, whoa, did we just say that? Did he just go there? Yes, I did. And, um, and so some of you are like, yes, and others are like, oh, I don't know about this. This sounds really weird. But um, I believe, again, it's a beautiful and biblical thing. And I stand my ground as a beautiful and biblical thing. I believe, again, that God has, that God ha created, he created uh, um, intimacy in this manner. And, and, and this should be an intimacy that is shared with no one else. No one else should be involved in this intimacy. Uh, what happens is it does bring the two together. And you're sharing this beautiful gift that God ordained for the marriage covenant between husband and wife. And, and so many times we're talking with so many different couples that it's like, you know, in, in counseling, when I'm counseling with a couple and, uh, and, and, and they're struggling, that is one of my first questions that I ask. Now, I don't want to know any details. Sorry, I'm the disclaimer. There is like no other details other than, have you had sex lately? And uh, that's, uh, that's it. Yes or no answer, just be honest. And I, we don't need to know any, any, further, any further, you know, uh, details, okay? Uh, but what it does is it does help protect our purity. Man, the enemy knows what he's doing. The enemy knows he's so cunning, the word tells us. He's the father of all lies. He's a deceiver, right? The world is pushing, uh, this, is pushing this agenda uh, in front of us. Every time we turn the TV or a movie on, we, we, we see it. Every time we, the, the internet pops up, we, we see it. It's so accessible. Trying to draw us away from God's plan. And so I just encourage you in that. The third practical tip to protecting our purity. In all seasons, protect our purity. The third practical tip is this. Uh, keep it, keep your clothes, man, buttoned and zipped, all right? And I know it sounds weird, right? It sounds like, what, do, what, is, what is he even talking? Is this church? Are we having church right now? Yes, we're, yes, we're in church, Discovery Church, 11 a.m., praise God. If we're gonna protect our purity, there's some standards in our lives, there's some things that have to happen in our lives, and, and one of them's keeping, keeping our clothes on. 
unless we're in the bedroom and praise God, all right, uh, they should come off, all right. But, but it, in front of everyone else, keep it button and zip. I don't know what's this thing about social media, particularly women, because if guys did it, it'd be really weird probably, but, but it should be weird for women too. It's like, man, I, I want to get the best shot I can, right, and post it for the world to see. See all my assets, right? And, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the shirt down. I'm going to push the, the, the deals up, and, and I'm going to take a picture and for all the world to see, like, this is me. No, no, we don't need to see that. Man, the one that God has placed in your life, they need to see that. That's it. Nobody else needs to see it. So help others protect, protect others' purity, you know, as you protect your own purity. All right, we can move forward. That was getting a little weird. All right, so 1 first, first Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It's not 2 Corinthians. It's my mistake, but 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, by the way, I hope you're, you're engaged in our uh, reading plans that we're producing. Uh, the February reading plan is 1 and 2 Corinthians. And, uh, and so it's one chapter each day. And Paul's addressing the church in Corinth. Uh, there's, there's a lot of outside uh, religions that are creeping into and different laws creeping into the church, and, and he's just pointing him to Jesus, pointing the church to Jesus. First and Second Corinthians, what we're reading through, and there's some reading plans right outside on, a, a, as you leave today. Uh, but First Corinthians chapter six, uh, verse eighteen says, "Flee sexual immorality." Now, what I love about this is, uh, listen, man, I don't have to go to Bible college or seminary to understand what flee sexual immorality means. And guess what? Neither do you. We don't need a, a degree to to know what flee sexual immorality means. Turn to person next to you and let them know what flee means. Let them know. Let them know what flee means. Flee. What does flee, flee mean? Run away, man. Run away. Flee sexual immorality. Flee sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. Verse 19. Verse 19. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You're not your own. Turn to the person next to you. Let them know you're not your own. You're not your own. You think you're your own, but you're not your own. You're not, you are not. You are not your own. Verse 20, verse 20. For you were bought. I love this. man. I love how this chapter closes. You were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. We were bought with a high price. What is the high price? It was the blood of Jesus. The high price. The blood of Jesus was shed for the forgiveness of uh, of sins, Hebrews describes. You and I in humanity, we were bought with the high price of Jesus. We were in bondage to our sin. But thank God, his plan from the beginning was that of sending Jesus the Messiah, who would show the greatest demonstration of love humanity has ever seen, has never seen before. That Jesus would come, that Jesus would die, that Jesus would be placed in a grave, that Jesus would rise victorious from the grave. You were bought with a high price. This body, my body, I don't own it, you don't own it. I know what world, the, the world says. Man, I know what culture says. It's my body, I'll do what I want. It's my body, I'm going to do it. If I feel like I, I'm good with it. No, no, no. When we look to the word of God, what do we see? We see a different standard. And our bodies, we were bought with a high price. The blood of Jesus. In all seasons, we need to protect our purity. Uh, listen, some of you today, you, you're here and, and you say, but, but Tim, I, I've blown it, man, I've missed it. Man, I even maybe, maybe you, even there was something done last night or said last night. It's like, man, I blew it, I missed it. Can, can I tell you today, upon the authority of the word of God, that no matter how bad you have missed it, no, no matter how bad you, you've messed up, there is no sin that Christ cannot and will not forgive. I want you to hear that today. Man, all, 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 the enemy wants to just keep this cloud over your head. And, and everywhere you go, it feels like it's going with you and it's going with. And it will continue to do so until you take that sin and you surrender it over to the Savior. His name is Jesus. Man, he's come to set you free. 
He longs for you to experience His love, His unconditional love. And then through you, the world experiences unconditional love. We close with verse 16. My love is mine and I am His. My love is mine and I am His. Just, just want to press in just for a moment. My love is mine and I am in his. Jesus talks about it this way, that the two become one. The, the two become one. And can I just encourage you, listen, protect the purity of your unity. If you're married today, protect the purity of your unity. Listen, if you're single today, you're looking towards marriage, protect your purity. Protect your purity so as you step into that marriage covenant, and there's a greater intimacy that, that you can experience. Protect your purity of your unity. The two become one. My love is mine, and I am his. Would you bow your heads? Would you close your eyes all across this place? There will be seasons of passion. There will be seasons of preparation. And in all seasons, listen, all seasons, protect your unity.